All right, so it's Zach and Jody Gray once again, minus Jody Gray, because I happen to do all of our editing, and we are talking about um, applying the Expo Disc custom white balance after the fact in case you didn't get to do it while you were shooting. Sometimes you're in a hurry, sometimes you grab Expo Disc shots at random moments, but what we highly recommend is if you're in a rush, make sure you capture the photograph of the Expo Disc first and then go ahead and shoot all the images in that series. Even if you don't happen to apply them in the camera, you can still do it in post-production. So we're sitting here in our office and we're gonna demonstrate how we would do that in post-production. So here we go. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and Jody and I use Lightroom for everything that we do. We try to avoid Photoshop like the plague. We always say that's like uh, dropping an atom bomb on an anthill for editing photos because Photoshop is just crazy. So you may use Aperture, you may use Photoshop or Bridge. Um, you can do all of these same processes that we're gonna show you. It's just a little bit different depending on the program that you use. So as you can see, if you're looking on the screen right here, we're looking at a picture of something that looks sort of bluish in color. And this is actually the photograph that we took of the Expo Disc while we were shooting Meredith in one of the previous videos that you probably already watched. So this is the most uh, important image that we have taken, except for, of course, all the ones of her face, which are very important, because this one is gonna give us the exact color that we need to apply to all the images. So what I'm gonna do first is show you what the camera did on auto white balance. And this is the image that the camera took right out of the camera on auto white balance. And as you can see, it's a pretty cold and kind of blue tinted image. And I think the reason that that happened was because you may have remembered the background that we had sort of had this orange rusty door in the background. The camera saw all that orange light bouncing off of it and it thought it was too warm, so it cooled the image down to this color naturally when the camera was trying to think. And of course, we don't want the camera thinking, which is why we shoot on manual and why we use the Expo Disc for color. So you can see here in our after photo with the color applied, what an unbelievably awesome difference. We have these rich tones. You can see the greens. Her skin looks just gorgeous. The whites of her eyes actually look white instead of over here where they have a blue tint. And this is the result that we want to go for it in the end. So how do we get to that result? Very simple. We showed you the process of how to capture the white balance, but this is how to apply it now in post-production. So you notice, if you look down in my grid at the bottom, all of the images are after the Expo Disc shot. So this Expo Disc image is intended to be applied to all of the following images. So all I have to do in Lightroom is go to the development module. And in the development module they have right over here, you can see on the right side of the screen, we have this little white balance selector it's called. You can press W to grab this or you can simply click on it. And all we have to do is take this white balance dropper and drop it down in the center of this image. Now, again, we said it's very important that you have correct um, exposure on the white uh, on the Expo Disc shot because if you don't, you're not going to get 18% gray. And we have to have 18% gray in order to get a correct color. So I'll pull the exposure down. As you can see, if I took uh, tried to use this for color, this is really really dark, and it may come out as a dark dark gray. Inversely, if it was really, really bright, it could look white instead of 18% gray. So it's very important that the histogram, as you can see over here, is right down the middle, which means we have a correct exposure, and that's how we shot it. And we simply grab the white balance dropper, drop it in the center, and you notice those little numbers there. It says red, green, blue, or RGB at the bottom of that little target that came up, and it said 49, 49, or 43, 62. If those say 50, 50, 50, that means we have an exactly perfect 18% gray. So anything within that range is gonna be cr pretty close. So as you can see, all I did there was I grabbed the white balance dropper, I click it in the center, and notice, oh my goodness, now it looks gray. This is awesome. And if we back up one step, if you look over here at the temperature that the, the, the camera shot, the, the white balance dropper, or the Expo Disc shot, it came out at 52.18, plus three tint. And when I grab the white balance dropper and drop it in the center, notice that changes to 8200 minus three. That's the correct temperature of the light that these images were shot in. 
So now that we have that perfect, and it's, can you imagine trying to guess that using Kelvin? 8200 minus three. That would have been pretty tricky to try to figure out. So now all we have to do is select this series of images like this. So I hold down shift and left click on a PC and I hit, now this little button comes up that says sync. So when I click on sync, it brings up the synchronized settings module. And if you're, this is not a Lightroom tutorial, so go on you know, Adobe's website if you wanna learn how to do all this stuff um, or come to one of our workshops where we teach this. Um, but you just simply wanna select white balance and then synchronize. And it's gonna take that 8200 minus three temperature, apply it to all of the images. And as you can see, now this is the after, check out the before. That's how the camera shot it. And there's the after, oh my gosh, what a tremendous difference. And now we have this entire series of images that we shot of Meredith that all have this perfect, amazing, beautiful, rich color in all of the shots and she just looks absolutely fantastic. So it's literally that simple to apply the custom white balance after the fact when you're using post-production. So that's the tutorial. We hope you guys learned a lot and we hope this helps speed up your post-production workflow. And that is it. Thank you guys for tuning in.